Hello. Hi. Oh, I should turn on my video. I don't have to be. I don't have to be hidden. <laughs> How's it going, Mark? Just fine. Okay. Now, before the recording starts, is it okay if I use Jackie or do you prefer Jacqueline? Jackie. And how should I? Jackie. What? Jackie. Jackie's okay. Good. Jackie is okay. Good. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> of course. Hey, Alyssa. Good morning. How's it going? Early. I don't, I don't know yet. It's kind of early still. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Come on. The sun is already awake. The sun is up. It's shining. It's probably, it's probably know, 70 like, degrees in San Diego, California, like it always is. <laughs> we had a lot of rain last night, which was really nice. Oh, nice. Yeah. See, yeah. see they're, they're predicting um, half a meter of snow in my oh area my for the next few days and, and threatening that it might be a meter of snow. So it's oh like, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. Mark, different... You're in the Denver area? North of, north of Denver, north about of an Denver. hour. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, Colorado. <laughs> yeah. I've been thinking because you know, Santa Fe is so boring. It's like, it honestly is like, the Florida of the Southwest, um, the like the the uh, the average age. I'm not joking. Is about like sixty here, <laughs> sixty yeah, enough because it's a retirement city. Right. So I've been Great thinking about Denver, <laughs> moving up to Denver. But I'm like, do I want to with all that snow? Oh, it's. I love having four seasons. So yes, it's. But you have to admit, it's four seasons. It's not like Santa Fe or Tucson or or San Diego where you have. You have beautiful and better than beautiful or a little worse than beautiful, right? I mean, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Shall we, let's see. I think we could safely get started. I put a number of items on the, oh, I put one item on the agenda. I'm not sure if others have agenda, agenda topics. Um, I know, so I know the past few times, like we, I, I didn't catch everyone. So I think there were a few things that like, Alyssa and I discussed, but I think mm -hmm. the thing that we wanted to bring up again was the contributor summit. Yeah. Um, and then figuring out where we could, where, if we can align it with CDCon and where we would put it and yeah, how right. we would execute it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, oops, it would help if I put things in there. Oh, there we go. Oleg's, Oleg's got it and I am colliding with you, Oleg. Sorry. Uh, no worries. <laughs> uh, it's fine. Okay, great. So, well, so I think I think oh, like Jackie was referring to contributor summit in the context of CDCon, right? So we should do a recap, mm -hmm. and probably Appreciate should also that. talk about uh, contributor summit for C June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, CDCon is June. Right. Yeah. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, I think. Oh, DevOps World 2021. Uh, anything you need on that topic, Alyssa? Are you comfortable there? Did you get the review committee you wanted, et cetera? Or do we need a topic on the agenda? Um, we don't. I Right okay. now we have, I have about, I think it's about the uh, five people uh, who will help me to review the submissions. So the CFP is not out yet. We're still, I'm working with the events team on that still. So we're shooting for end of March for that to be available. And Alyssa, so, I'll yeah. help you too, if you need another reviewer. I'm okay, like, I've been okay. reviewing so much. I feel like I've got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, we, we can definitely use the help. So I'll include you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, we are recording. Okay. Yeah, I'll just share the screen then. Okay. Yeah, I didn't think that we, the recording is going on. Yes, I, I may need to edit out my early weather comments. People may be offended <laughs> by my my brutal no view of weather. Really yeah, my retirement good. city comment about Santa Fe. I can't uh, let that get out. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So topics we have for today, just in case we cut it. Uh, 
yeah, so I should go to Africa, Contributor Summit Recap, uh, Contributor Summit at CDCon, and Devops for 2021. Basically, that's it. Mm -hmm. Those okay. look good. Yeah, so for she caught uh, uh, Africa, Mark. Yeah, so so what we're Zina Babu Bakar, uh, as part of the docs office hours, introduced us to She Code Africa, a contributathon they're having, which is a coding camp uh, that will be happening the month of April. They fund by so sponsors pay funding in, and they then use this those funds to pay African women to contribute to open source projects during the month of January. So what they need is sponsors corporate organizations that are willing to fund it. They need mentoring organizations like the Jenkins project and they are, they are, working, they are working on participants. So, so that's the, the caliber. And I got word today from CloudBees that they are willing to fund. So that's one of the sponsors and Alex Earl in our last platform SIG meeting agreed to ask Broadcom and he has asked, he hasn't had an answer back yet. So there's we see two potential corporate sponsors from just our influence. I'm going to ask a few other corporate contacts that I have if they're willing to assist. The, yeah. That's the, the funding part to help pay these women in Africa to assist with, to contribute to open source projects. Then the mentoring challenge or the, the project ideas challenge. Yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> So the project ideas challenge, my thought was we should choose this time to do a single project idea that invites up to three contributors on the same idea and they work together with each other in addition to our mentors. I've got agreement from Kristen Whetstone and from me and from Meg McRoberts that all three of us are willing to, to mentor during the month of April. Okay. So Meg... Uh, is the is the third, and Meg is willing to mentor during the early hours of the African morning, whereas Kristen and I are better suited to end of African working day, so after their their working day ends. Uh, mm -hmm. So we think we've got a good, a viable set of mentors there. Uh, the idea was just a single project idea, not multiple, and keep multiple people on a single concept that would give them a chance to do compilation, to get some experience with Jenkins and to provide some examples as a result. Now, open to others, if there are better suggestions for project ideas, this was the one that most excited me. Oh, I have an update too on this. Oh, go ahead, Jackie. <laughs> yeah, so the CDF is sponsoring as a gold sponsor. Um, so we committed to money, but we told uh, Zaina that the challenge was gonna be providing mentors um, and so I need to follow up with her, um, but I, we did invite her to the last um, TOC meeting, the CDF TOC meeting to present and see, to basically say, hey, CDF is putting up the money, um, but they didn't commit to mentors. So if you're interested in helping us mentor, um, let us know. I haven't, I didn't follow up to see how that went because I was out of office that day. Um, but yeah, that's also just FYI that the CDF is sponsoring. So if CloudBees or Broadcom falls through, and if you guys could help with mentoring, then we've got that covered. Well, and, and there, so Z, the Contributhon's goal is actually $40,000 of sponsorship. So yeah. they need, they definitely they need, need CDF, they need Broadcom, they need CloudBees, they need anybody else we can recruit. Cool. And yeah. now Speaking Jackie, that, for your, oh, go ahead, Oleg. Yeah, speaking of that, would it make sense to actually announce uh, the participation? Because currently we have a kind of chicken and egg problem. Uh, so we are not listed as a mentoring organization. Uh, but if uh, there is agreement that we are a mentoring organization, we could probably promote it through Jenkins channels. Yes. I sending it to the developer mailing list. Yes, I, I and that's... I think we should put that as an action item for me, Oleg. I agree wholeheartedly. We, I was trying to confirm that we had sponsor organizations and only got the enough confirmation today from CloudBees and now from Jackie. 
So I think I think we are ready to promote the event yeah. and ready to do a, a cloud be or a, not a, a Jenkins.io blog post and put it up with some ideas there to to actively promote it. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, because we 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 sent in the paperwork and the payment already. Oh, you did. Okay, yeah. so so we've already got one one contributor. That's good, because CloudBees has not sent in the the funding or the paperwork yet, mm -hmm. but is is getting close. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So if Oleg, if you want to just put that action item for me, I'll I'll take that one. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Mark, once that blog's ready, we'll cross promote also on the CDF blog. Great. Mm -hmm. Super. Yes. Also, developer mailing list. We will cover our social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are the CDF projects participating? Um, no, not as of right now, because that was the thing mm -hmm. that we said. Hey, it, you know, we brought it up to the TOC committee to see if they anybody mentored, but I I, I didn't hear anything. Um, so that was our challenge, where we said, hey, we might not be able to provide a mentor, but we'll provide the funds. Mm -hmm. So JFrog is checking with their management to see if they can provide uh, funding as well. Oh, Great. cool. So I also put Zainab in touch with the CNCF community. So I don't know if she was able to to work with Priyanka and them to, to get this sponsored as well from the CNCF side. Okay. Anyway, I think that uh, they have a good chance of collecting uh, sponsors. And if we can help, uh, we can definitely help. Mm -hmm. So yeah, regarding mentors, yeah, probably we could find uh, a bit more. Um, April uh, is a good time frame in terms of JSOC. And uh, yeah, also some of uh, students might be eligible for Google Summer of Code. So, oh, cool, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and keep that in mind. Yeah, so, th so this one, they intentionally placed it to avoid any collision with Google Summer of Code. So that, that's, that's why they chose April. And so I like that a lot, that, that it's, it should be a relatively quieter time. Google Summer of Code is still in the exploring phase at that point, right? It hasn't started coding yet. Yeah. So yeah, basically when application period is in the middle of um, the event, so, and my understanding that uh, participants of Contributon uh, technically can apply to JSOC this year. Yes. Are they? Mm, yeah, the terms were still a bit blurry, so I wasn't sure. But... Well, and, and this, the, so Contributon is not limited to students in that sense. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. it, they're, they're not, it's just women in Africa. And, and that's, the, I, I think that's a good, choice for them finding the the contributors the the participants is is sort of their responsibility yeah mm -hmm. yeah that's okay so anything else on this topic no thanks thanks for the time okay mm -hmm. uh, so mm, let's see what's next contributor summit recap so basically, uh, to think we could uh, briefly cover uh, the outreach uh, part because yeah, we had uh, the feedback uh, which Mark sent to the developer mailing list. And yeah, for me, one of the questions is what could we do better in order to attract more contributors through such event? Because um, as we had. 25 to 30 people, which is good. At the same time, we had almost no new contributors. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's something we could change. Okay. So, oh, mm -hmm. like I was thinking to start, we could pop, we could highlight the current contributors that we have. 
right? So highlighting them mean giving them a, a spotlight, like talking up, you know, giving them space so that we can write about them and share their story, why they're contributing to the project and, you know, what are their, um, what, are, uh, what are they doing? What are their aspirations? What do they find value in contributing? So, and then we should lay it out in a way that we are promoting diversity in it as well. So I know that there's a lot of familiar faces within our contributor pool, right? Um, so maybe we, also include diversification in there. So that way we're killing two birds with one stone. Okay. okay. So there's diversity. Okay. Um, yeah, we can definitely do that. Another action item which basically appears uh, constantly is that we still don't have a way to uh, send uh, contributor communications. So maybe if we had a way, we could, uh, let's say, just send it in the newsletter or announce it through different channels. For me, the main impression was that uh, if you are not active Jenkins contributor, uh, you wouldn't know about this summit. Is it the correct assessment? Absolutely. In fact, even many active Jenkins contributors do not know about did not know about the summit because you're right that reaching them is is challenging. Right? I we posted very briefly on the developer mailing list, but if you're not a regular reader of the developer mailing list, completely missed it. Um, posted a tweet, but again, if you're not following the Twitter feed, uh, posted to LinkedIn, but are there better ways that we could do that that would actually get their attention more like, be more likely to get their attention? Yeah, so one way which we discussed a few times before that uh, we should have a mailing list or whatever to distribute announcements. So pretty much like CDF newsletter or continuous information uh, being sent about Jenkins uh, by CloudBees and other stories, but focus specifically on contributors. So anyone who is interested in contributing or who is active contributor can just subscribe to this mailing list and we will distribute information there. I like so that idea. The uh, idea there that would be a low, a low bandwidth, high mm -hmm. content channel, whereas mm -hmm. Jenkins Developers is quite high bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely low bandwidth. Um, so we could just send, let's say, a couple of messages per month, maybe even less. I definitely use it to announce uh, contributor summits, maybe call for papers for key events like CDCon. Uh, um, but uh, no continuous uh, traffic going there. I have a question about um, the promoting of the summit. Um, did, did you promote it over Gitter? Because I think also you have a lot of the community there or was it purposely kept off certain channels because you are, you know, you're going after a very specific audience? Uh, so so we, I think we did mention it on, on oh, the okay. Gitter channels, but okay. The, the challenge with the Gitter channels is they are, they are sort of subtopic specific, and okay. I did not put it on every channel, right? And yeah. maybe I should have, where I should have said, look, I'm going to blast this onto every Gitter channel that I'm on. And I, I certainly did not do that. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is we can, if, if it's okay with the community, we could also leverage the CDF channels to, like, if there's a blog, we can pro cross promote the blog on the CDF we can add it to the newsletter. We can add it as an event. Um, you know, there's th there's a few ways. Uh, you know, also like the internal mailing list. But again, is it, you know, are we intentionally keeping it off those channels, or is it okay to do that? Totally okay. So one of the reasons why we didn't do that is time constraints. Uh, okay. okay if, uh, Announcements came out early. If there was more than one month, 
organizers so then we could uh, promote it more okay and i don't think that it can be only limited to jenkins because for example we could have joint se sessions like interoperability let's say jenkins and tikton how we integrate etc so even if it's a jenkins contributor summit uh, we could involve other communities as well okay if we do family preparation yeah okay but, yeah, yeah so let's um you know for moving forward yeah let us know because we you know the newsletter is doing pretty well we have a, a good open rate um and a good click-through rate on that so it, it's always you know let's let's use those channels to help mm -hmm. promote in the future yeah, definitely. Um, yeah maybe another thing we could do is to have special sessions related to new contributor onboarding because I we like do it uh, for community events but we didn't do it for contributor summit though it could be an opportunity yeah i mean like we could do a podcast episode or a webcast episode through the cdf channels to help promote and to just kind of lay the land like the lay of the land of what to expect at a contributor summit mm -hmm. if you're if you've never been to one um okay. i like that idea a lot Oh, like, um, because I think people are intimidated to go into a community and, and, and um, seeing where they can help unless they have like the technical expertise and they feel comfortable about that. But for, but I know we need help in a lot of areas. Um, so maybe we can, another thing is you know, we have the, our web page on Jenkins.io. This is how to participate, but maybe we can drill down to a little, a little bit deeper in um, like getting it down to like, this is how easy, showing how easy it is that people can, can participate. Just making things easy for people to help out. Yeah, or maybe like if you have a breakdown, the types of roles or types of tasks that you need help with. I think like for me, there was always such a misperception on open source that you needed to be technical, but like I could have always been like Mark, I could have been somebody who did documentation or somebody that helped planned events or, you know, there's different other types of skill sets. And I, I think that that's probably what stops a few folks from, from coming in. Cause they're like, I don't, I don't know how to write code. We did it uh, at uh, events like Hacktoberfest, etc., where we explicitly say that it's not just code, that it's not uh, uh, just Java, because yeah, for Jenkins' perception that everything is about Java, but mm -hmm. it's not. Is there a recording of this, or is there like a, because then we should just, you know, add it to the CDF YouTube channel. I can ask Roxanne to also um do some like some social media around it uh, especially as we're preparing to do like the second contributor summit in june um and then people can just have reference points to understand you know how to get involved in the community how to start just just getting in well, for this event uh, yeah this is opening of the hack test from 2019 I believe that it's relevant. Yeah, it's exactly this presentation. Okay. So I will uh, place it in here. Cool. Okay. And but then, yeah, we've had uh, multiple instances of similar recordings um, for Hackfest events. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Oleg, maybe um, make an effort to like have one of these uh, breakout sessions at conferences. So we have CVCon that's coming up. We have DevOps world. So, and I know that like Google Summer of Code, right? So at the beginning, when we first talked about it at DevOps world, it, you know, there wasn't so much interest in it, but it takes time, just like anything else, it takes time to build it up. And then as I seen it over the years afterwards that, you know, the crowd gets bigger, the interest, there's more people participating in it or interested in it or at least being aware of it so maybe we can also do that yeah and i know like for cdcon we're trying to have birds of a feather for each of the project sessions again and maybe this is 
a good way to like kick off the um like the birds of a feather session do a like a 15 minute talk and then just open it up for the the rest of the attendees to ask questions and so i think there's opportunity there mm -hmm. i agree or maybe just a generic um, a workshop uh, that's a feedback for contributing because many approaches and concepts are possible between projects. Each project needs documentation, each project has newcomer friendly issues, hopefully. So we can just go through these uh, general concepts. Yeah. Okay, we could do that. And yeah, if there are slots at CDCon, we can use it as a filter. Okay. Anything else regarding contributor summit? No. So, yeah, I like I, I guess open. I have a question. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Uh, well, what went really well about the contributor summit? We had we had people involved and multiple time zones worked great which okay. was was we it was better than a a local summit because we had people who would never have made it to belgium as an example in the past mm -hmm. we've done this at fosdom mm -hmm. and by not being co-located we had people involved there who could not have attended otherwise and they they actually attended were active participants so so that was that was a plus, something that we got from this contributor summit that we can't get when we we are co-located. Yeah. Now, now, one of the things that might be worth still touching here, Alyssa had identified as part of the outreach um, vision there that education outreach and there are a couple of other key topics that came out of the contributor summit that are going on to our roadmap. But I don't know that that today is the time to to do that because we need to get those onto the roadmap and and talk through plans are still evolving. Yeah. Alyssa, is that okay for you? We just, I mean, I we, we know that they, we, we agreed that they would be on the roadmap. They were included yeah. in the roadmap presentation at the end of the summit, but they haven't been actually added to the roadmap yet. Right. And so we need to do that. And that's that's an Alyssa and me have that action item. Around the roadmap, it's not exactly impressive for outreach. Right, exactly, and that's that's why we've got two or three. One is educate educational institution outreach, mm -hmm. um, improve onboarding experience. If I remember right, was one, and we we've got to get those into the roadmap, into the yeah. official roadmap. So. Uh, uh, getting more new faces to contribute to the project and then diversity and inclusion um, is the other one or it can be grouped together with the um yeah. with the getting more more contributors mm -hmm. well one thing that I'm not sure whether it's a roadmap item because, well, it's an important topic, but I believe that it's a continuous topic. Right. So, yeah, I, I think that the education and institutional outreach is has the potential to be a project with a definable start and end and specific objectives. So I think it is a reasonable fit on the roadmap, I agree that seeking more contributors may not be. Yeah. Well, it's just, uh, if it's a speci special program, so for example, if we define uh, months of, uh, of Jenkins contribution or whatever, uh, months of outreach, let's do that. Um, but uh, yeah. We just need to think uh, how to properly frame that and how to properly plan that. Right. Okay. It's going to be a first which we definitely should be doing. Okay. So, yeah. 
next contributor summit. Yesterday, the governance meeting, we had a discussion. And uh, my understanding that uh, currently CDCon schedule is parked, uh, plus uh, there are implied uh, cost limitations. And the proposal from Tracy was that we actually do it as a day after CDCon, or maybe a minus, uh, day minus one. Uh, so current plan for CDCon. Yeah, so we'd be looking either at that Monday, the 22nd, I believe, no, sorry, the 21st, yeah. or we'd be looking at that Friday, which would be the 25th. I think both options are quite fine uh, for us. Yeah, and, and she also said, you know, we'll, we'll make it part of the CDCon agenda. We'll include it in the schedule. Um, I think the challenge is um, like we have two day zero events happening. So there's that additional cost because we have the, the platform reserved for a few days. Um, so that's why we, if we could do it through like Zoom or through an external platform, but we just link out to it. Um, I think that that's one of the things that she said she, we could swing. It will be perfectly fine. Um, we don't need uh, the main conference platform for that. Yeah, the number of participants, we will get lucky if it will be 100 people and 100 people is something we can host in Zoom easily. So, I don't worry about that too much. Okay, yeah, just mm -hmm. then just, we just need to make a final decision on the date so that we can just get it um, added to the to the schedule and then also so we can start doing promotion or add it to all of our CD comp promotion. Mm -hmm. I think that if we agree in principle that we do that, uh, we can just uh, create a placeholder. Uh, so I guess you need uh, an abstract or whatever. Yeah, yeah, just give me a title and an abstract and then we could we could add it. Yeah, for that I'll probably start a Google Doc uh, so okay. that we just uh, put uh, all the information there and collaborate on that. Yeah, that sounds great. So Oleg and Mark, oh, what are you thinking in terms of uh, the dates for now? I, I, I guess for me, fri Friday, is that good for the folks over in Europe? Because we do have a lot of contributors from Europe, unless we do that during the European time, time zone. Personally, I'm not even uh, concerned about uh, the day, maybe even uh, doing it on the weekend. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but it could be also an option. Okay. Uh, if we choose between Monday and Friday, yeah, no preference at all. Okay. Friday is better for fun events, uh, but yeah, I guess that's it. So, so okay, so CDCon is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, is that right? Yeah, so it looks so we are having Spinnaker Summit Day Zero on the 22nd, and then Get Up Summit also on the 22nd, um, and then CDCon is the 23rd and 24th. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so basically, we can do the same as Spinnaker Summit, just have it on this page. Yeah, yeah, we could add it. We could we could add a page for the contributor summit just like that. Mm -hmm. okay. So so then would would that be allowed for us to do a day zero event that doesn't use the CDCon infrastructure because we can't afford the CDCon infrastructure, but be announced as it? That that was the I think then the 22nd would be would be great, but that may be seen as a competitor to, hey, you're doing a day zero thing, but not using the day zero infrastructure of, of CDCon. Yeah, Especially and I think- Especially DevOps Summit. 
because it's uh, more general and many of uh, our visitors may go there. Uh, yeah, uh, so, okay. so that's why we wanted to stay away from the 22nd was because Got of the it. get up summit. Okay, so so then Monday the 21st or Friday the 25th, yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, both, uh, both of these options are fine. So we can probably uh, launch a doodle inside advocacy and outreach seek or maybe in the wider community uh, just to get feedback from others because I don't have preference at all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go create a doodle. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. Well, and I think it might be good when you create that doodle, I may use this, the list of people who registered for the last summit and email it to them directly. Yeah, that's fine. Just because, hey, you registered for the last one. Here's a new one. Please give us your opinion on this if you'd like to be a participant. Mm hmm I promised I wouldn't share their email addresses with others. I didn't promise them that I wouldn't uh, occasionally email send them an interesting email. <laughs> right. Okay, that's fine. So, yeah, I think that it should be enough. And uh, yeah, if you agree to use our own platform, yeah, I don't think it will be a major effort to uh, configure that. And I guess that's it for the contributor summit. Oh. Yeah, one question about CDCon. Uh, should we expect a project booth there? The project, uh, oh, booth. project booth, yeah. We, we asked Tracy about this yesterday um, and I totally forgot what she said. <laughs> I, it's okay, I remember. <laughs> okay, good. So, so she said that, um, uh, she can help with that as long as we can come up with uh, people to support the booth. Yeah, thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> yeah, because I think that was that was the concern last year was that um, the reason why we didn't do it was because we didn't have volunteers staffing the booth and we didn't want the booth to be empty all day as people were in sessions and so if we can if we can staff it then she said that we can have a booth that Jenkins can have a booth mm -hmm. so Jackie is there a dedicated um expo hall to hours or time um I think we just left it open all day we didn't have a, a set schedule okay mm -hmm. so so knowing what you know now uh are you still interested in doing a booth then, Oleg? So, my experience with the booths at uh, virtual events is not that positive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's one of the concerns. Mm -hmm. So, we could have one uh, just a kind of live chat, uh, etc. But yeah, we'd really focus on birds of feeder. Uh, but if there is interest to have booths, we definitely can prepare on our side and we can find contributors to be around. Right. So if you just need it for the content, we can help. We could also ask the ambassadors. There's a lot of um, ambassadors who are also Jenkins uh, community folks. So maybe they might also be able to help staff that. So there's two pools we can try to pull from. Right. So Jackie, from your experience with, with last year's event, what was the, um, the visit, what, what was that like when for sponsors? Was there a lot of activities? Um, so I think the, the average was like some, somewhere around like 150 leads per booth that, that they got. Um, mm -hmm. This year we are using Gamatize mm -hmm. to incentivize folks to visit all the booths. So we are trying to increase that booth traffic uh, by by gamifying it. So, it, um, you know, we're going to ask each of the booth sponsors to see if they have something that they want to give away. Um, and the way that Gamatize works is that each of the folks actually have to engage with somebody to get a code. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And then they go and enter that code in game in the game of Tice platform to increase like their their leaderboard position. Um, and then, you know, if you get to certain tiers, for example, then you get certain giveaways. Right. Um, so I think it'll, it'll depend on also like one of the things that I noticed, people are actually downloading a lot of content. So if you if there are like, Jenkins is the way material that you can share with them or, you know, spec sheets or case studies or any of that stuff um, around Jenkins, I think this is a good opportunity to, you know, uh, customize the booth to, for that. Right. Yeah. And we can definitely do that, have content available. Or like videos, if you can link out to a video or, you know, yeah, all that stuff. Okay. Um, that's, that's when I notice the booths do better when they have content to download than mm -hmm. when it's just, you know, informate like high level information about the project. But mm -hmm. if you've got content to download and you've got people um, there to engage, mm -hmm. the booth traffic ends up doing a lot better. Okay. Okay, so we just need to decide whether we want to um, to do one for the project. Yeah. And I think we still have some time to decide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would be the decision deadline approximately? Um, I think we probably need to know um, probably by June 1st at the latest, because uh, Jennifer would need to go in and build the booth out. And that's the mm -hmm. deadline that we're using for um, all sponsors to submit their contracts by. Okay. So yeah, we have plenty of time. Yeah. Probably, I would say a little bit before that, Oleg. So if we need the booth to be staffed, I'll probably have to, I'll probably need time to reach out to folks to, uh, to ask for volunteers, right? And so they need to make sure that their their time is available or or block mm -hmm. time for it. Yeah. Okay. So we'll May fifteenth. Yeah, sounds good. That's good. Okay. Let's just revisit it at the next meeting then and see whether you have uh, uh, preferences. Uh, but yeah. Uh, boost is just uh, an edit value you think I should uh, I think we should really focus on events like uh, birth of feeder or maybe uh, this contributor session because such session uh, will be more efficient than just having to boost mm -hmm. yeah yeah I okay. mean mm -hmm. okay. so let's keep working on that um, yeah uh, for DevOps world. Yeah. Uh, so, so DevOps world, um, it's still on schedule, uh, slated for end of September. Um, we're expecting CDF to be a part of DevOps world just like last year. You know, keynote, um, have its own track, um, have its own booth. Um, and then I'm building the community track along with the folks within the community. And mm -hmm. then um, CDF, Jackie will be leading that effort for the CDF track, just like mm -hmm. last year. Mm, and then the theme, I have the theme. It's, again, it's similar to last year as well. It's um, something along the line of, oh, building the future of software delivery together. It's similar to last year, just reworded a little bit differently this year. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, definitely all the CDF projects fill this theme well. So. Yeah, taken that we have conventional information about JSOC, we can assume that uh, we will be able uh, to have uh, presentations like last year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whether it's community track or CDF track, we can figure it out later. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, how many participants will be there, but hopefully enough it's virtual so hopefully we can get mm -hmm. you know a lot 
Yeah, definitely. And yeah, stay tuned for call for papers. Yes, and that's slated for um, end of this month. Mm -hmm. This is great. So then we will start preparing for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a good time to start thinking about uh, what talks we pre can present. Yeah, um, Alyssa, quick question mm -hmm. uh, on the CDF track. Um, are we going to be able to, or should we ask folks to submit their papers through the CFP or do we curate that track ourselves? That's a good question. So um, the events team is still shopping or well, I think they're probably narrowing it down to, uh, I think they're using a different platform than what we used last year. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a meeting with them at the end of this meeting. So okay. I'll ask, I'll ask them for you. Okay, cool. Yeah, because um, probably through the through their the tool just to keep everything together and so that they can send out communications as well, Jackie. Yeah, that would you, be great. I, okay. I rather try to do that instead of me trying to curate everything because we sort of did it last minute last year. Um, yeah. And I think at least this way, like if, if I could get community members to also help review the submissions mm -hmm. um, and then we can if we have to curate then that that's okay too but um yeah because then i could just start promoting that and asking folks to start submitting their content for the cdf track yeah uh, i'll i'll bring that up with them and okay I, yeah i think i think it's probably much cleaner to have it through the tool yeah it'd be nice if we could do that yeah the only difference is that if uh, there is a track or let's say a workshop located event with later CFP date, um, it allows uh, more contributors uh, to submit the, let's say, last minute development. So if they create something uh, right before the conference or if they miss uh, the main deadlines. So if there are events with such delayed uh, CFP deadlines, it's also useful sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, for the main uh, CP using the platform, it's perfectly fine. Got it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, let's see it goes. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Thanks a lot uh, for the details and for your time. Uh, do we have any other topics for today? I think I'm good. And, yeah, thanks everyone, and see you in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.